pay you all in. Good morning, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the south, where specifically we are in the great state of Florida. I think the plan today is to try to head east, try to make some distance east, heading into uh, mainland Florida. But I wanted to stop here first, because I am coming to you live from Valparaiso, Florida. Now, this, uh, this is a mythical, a mythical city that I heard about quite some time ago, because you see, I grew up in Valparaiso, Indiana, the, uh, the, 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 the town, a small town in, uh, in Northwest, uh, Northwest Indiana. And I remember when I was probably like in third grade or second grade, um, someone said there was another Valparaiso, another Valparaiso in Florida. And finally, I have made it to the second Valparaiso here in Valparaiso, Florida. What makes this more interesting to me, and I don't know if this is interesting to anyone but me, is uh, Valparaiso, Florida actually named after Valparaiso, Indiana. Uh, the, there was a Valparaiso, Indiana, it's a, kind of a suburb of Chicago. It was a wealthy Chicago businessman that came down here to this area of Florida, decided to develop this area, and he named it after Valparaiso, Indiana. He really apparently liked the name Valparaiso uh, as well because it means, and it's translated into Vale of Paradise. And if you've ever been to Valparaiso, Indiana, you know that that is an extremely accurate description of Valparaiso, Indiana. A town known, probably best known, for uh, being the home of Orville Redenbacher. The uh, the popcorn uh, the popcorn baron from uh, from uh, Northwest Indiana and uh, I'm not sure what Valparaiso Florida is known for seems to yeah, seems to be a nice area a very small town as I was driving through um, got some some beautiful beaches and things like that on the water almost like on a little island here in uh, on uh, on the, the Gulf Coast of. Florida, and I wanted to get some merchandise, some some Valparaiso, Florida merchandise. But I'm not seeing a lot of gift shops or, or things like that. They don't have a Walmart here, so I, I wanted some souvenirs for Valparaiso, Florida. But I think uh, so far I'm I'm coming up empty-handed. Yeah, it's true. It's true. The mythical city of Valparaiso, Florida. Now one of the best ways to learn about a small town, to kind of immerse yourself in the small town history, is to go to the local museum. So here's the Heritage Museum of Northwest Florida. Unfortunately, they appear to be very closed. Let me see here. We'll check yeah they are they are closed today so we'll just have to just have to peer through the window there's a oh there's a mural in there so that we can gleam from the, the the mural you can see they uh they had a a a a a, a wheel made for uh making clothing it looks like they made some baskets back in uh, the day there was a guy who uh, rode around town in a horse and buggy. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is ironic though, because Valparaiso, Indiana, is in Northwest Indiana. Valparaiso, Florida, is in Northwest Florida. Similarities are eerie. I do really think this is a cool building, though. I love uh, the glass here in the front. Oh, what do you guys think this building was? Looks like it may have been a hotel. It could have been the hotel lobby right there. But uh, leave a comment in the comment section. What do you think this building uh, used to be? And this, by the way, is one of the things 
that stresses me out the most about these road trips, about planning out, laying out these road trips here, is uh, these small museums. Um, again, this one I didn't know about until till just today, so uh, I was disappointed it's closed because they always have like such limited hours, these like small local museums. I think it's hard, you know, hard to find people to staff the museums. You know, a lot of them maybe not don't get a lot of traffic, but um, like as I am planning out my road trips, there's a lot of the small museums that I really, really want to see, and some of them just have like the, the most difficult hours, you know, where some of, there, I know there's some museums that are literally open like four hours out of the week. I mean, just, you know, some of them are open, uh, you know, just Saturday and Sunday, some are closed Monday, a lot of them are closed Monday. Mondays and Sundays are always iffy about local museums being closed. Some of them only open Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's just, you, and then finding that in Korea, the correct information online um, when these museums are going to be open. You know, I always have to like, I always have to like uh, double authenticate. I want to find at least two places that say uh, when the uh, when the museum is open. You can't trust Google because it's not always accurate. You go to their website. Sometimes they don't even have their hours on their website or sometimes they don't even have a website. And you go to Facebook and then it was, sometimes it won't say. So sometimes it is a little blind luck just seeing if you're going to catch a, uh, a small museum uh, open so a lot of and then still like you could do all that work I could put all the work in to try to make sure the uh, the museum is open and then I get there and it's closed happened mul has happened multiple multiple times where I've uh, figured out when something's gonna be open and um, it ends up what is that noise ends up being uh, being closed once I, I show up and and knock on uh, the door. And then of course you get the delightful situations where I went through all these problems, all these issues, sorted through all that, and they're like, sorry, no pictures. Like, ah. But yeah, planning out, I don't know if that's, I don't know what that is. <laughs> After uh, planning out uh, all, you know, the, the best laid plans you know, can just fall apart. So yeah, if you ask me what the, what's the most stressful thing, it's trying to figure out when the uh, the local small museums are going to be open. Again, some of them close early. They close at 2 or 3. You have to get there. If I'm moving, it's hard to stop. Figure out how to, to stop and make sure I'll be there at the right time. It's, it's it, a lot of work goes into trying to hit these uh, small museums when they're open. So even though the museum is closed, you can still enjoy the outside exhibits. And here we are talking about uh, Ronald Reagan's St Strategic Defense Initiative, which um, was a, uh, a Cold War era uh, program designed to help protect Americans against, uh, you know, during the Cold War when, 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 when tensions were high. They, they developed new weapons. I know this is, uh, sometimes, remember this was called like the Star Wars, uh, initiative because um, they wanted to put uh, satellites in space to to uh, intercept ICBMs but this here I guess is a weapon that was designed to uh, to to uh, combat ICBMs and it was developed here at the the, the nearby Elgin Air Force Base this is the uh, 50 millimeter thermal management rail gun this is a Cold War era weapon that apparently was never, it was tested but never actually used in combat. Um, apparently it uh, was a battery powered cannon that, uh, look at this, that would launch uh, projectiles at an incredibly high Velocity. And I see these copper, copper tubing here. I don't know if this is, is that this. I don't know if this is the projectile here. If it just shot like a, like a big, giant dart. And I don't know if this was designed maybe to to intercept the uh, the missiles 
but interesting. I guess a piece of Cold War history here in uh, Valparaiso, Florida. But speaking of museums, as I travel the United States, I do have one rule that I try to try to always follow. I call that the EM rule. And uh, what that means is whenever I see a museum, whenever I stumble upon a museum, as long as it is open, I try to, to make a point of stopping and uh, checking out the museum. Because I have a belief that every museum has at least one thing that is, uh, that is worth seeing, one thing that is fascinating inside. So I figure we would uh, stop here at the United States Air Force Armament Museum and uh, check out what they have to offer. Yeah, we are right outside of the uh, Elgin Air Force Base. And uh, I've been to a few uh, military museums that were actually on uh, Air Force bases. And uh, that's a little more tricky because you have to like uh, go to the visitor center and they have to check you out, make sure it's safe for you to enter the military base. This one sits just outside so you don't have to go through, uh, through that rigmarole. As we enter, greeted by uh, these soldiers here in uh, EOD suits, which is the uh, disposal of explosives. So I guess it's almost like a bomb-proof suit there. And uh, down here, have a little bomb-retrieving robot. That's a good robot. You do you do good work. Oh yeah, you can see the building here. Actually have some aircraft here inside the building. Now this is interesting. This is stained glass from a uh, from a local church. It says uh, the uh, Quintham St. Andrew Church. And uh, you see there they have Jesus on this stained glass, of course. But over here you have a... Uh, a paratrooper on uh, on this glass here it says that the church would honor uh, military figures in their stained glass. It's very very interesting. Not not definitely not seen that before. Over here we have the weapons display vault, and oh my gosh, look at that! That definitely is a weapon. And you know what, folks? It's been it's been a long time. <laughs> But, uh, I forgot, let's see if I remember the words. It's guns, 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 Oh, look at that. That's a, uh, a, uh, submachine gun. I also remember it's a Tommy gun. I always thought that was really cool. And, uh, and, uh, I remember Dick Tracy. I was fascinated by the Tommy guns. Yeah, the interesting look there. Really a lot of unusual firearms here. And yeah, what is that? It's like some sort of, sort of crazy scope on that one. There's a big case full of bazookas right there. Oh my gosh. It's like terrifying. <laughs> terrifying objects of war. Oh, this is like I didn't 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 Rambo have a gun like that? Yeah, a lot of these guns seem uh, pretty effective, but why have one machine gun when you can have six machine guns all uh, all wrapped up together? This reminds me of, like those. 80 mo 80s movies, maybe like the, this would be like in Rambo 2 where they'd be firing that and then the strip of bullets would be like like feeding into the gun. There is a United States Air Force firefighter. I guess they kind of just go with having the fireproof uh, suit. And oh, look at that. Look at all those like bomb robots back there. That's pretty amazing. Always, always love a good uh, robot. You can see this plane here. This is called the Thunderbolt. You can see the pilot back there. And um, this always fascinates me, though. They put, like, little designs and flair 
on their on their planes. You know this military. You know a lot of the things are very sterile, very clean. But uh, I like when they're given the freedom to add uh, things onto the planes. It's like looks like a little goose on the side there. It's the expected goose. I guess is the name of the plane. And um, for some reason they have some sort of sexy lady there on the uh, nose. Oh yeah. And do not turn the propeller. <laughs> Imagine if you just run up here and give that a good whirl. The, uh, the, uh, the, the, the museum staff would come and uh, give you a big frown. This is the C3 Link Trainer, which was, was invented in the 1930s. And this is a simulator to train pilots. Um, it looks like, it seriously looks like a kid's ride or an amusement park ride, but uh, no, that was used to train uh, actual soldiers. This is the Mustang, the pilot there, Captain Charles Bailey. I guess his plane is called My Buddy. Had a very close relationship with his plane. Now, this worried me when I saw it, that uh, old Captain Charles Bailey had swastikas on his uh, plane. I'm like, oh no, are, you're not like a Nazi, are you? But um, <laughs> I think, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think that would just be where, like, maybe he had shot down two, uh, two Nazi planes. So actually, uh, that's a good thing. Good thing that he has those there. But I don't know, I would just like, even if I did shoot down those planes, I would just not want that nasty symbol uh, on my plane. Oh wow, look who's here. The fat man. This is the uh, the second nuclear bomb dropped um, on Japan. Obviously this isn't the same one because that one is uh, was it exploded. Apparently uh, only two nuclear bombs have been used in the history of mankind besides all the you know posturing and uh, and whatnot. But wow, yeah, I mean, this is just, you know, something that really uh, changed the, uh, the course of human history, the way people viewed conflict, the way people viewed just almost anything politically or internationally. You know, it's a, a game changer, to say the very least. Um, very somber, too. You know, you think about you know, the innocent people that were just trying to live their everyday life that were absolutely devastated by something like this. A very, very heavy, very, very heavy uh, feelings here looking at uh, the fat man. This is the shooting star here. See a uh, pilot there, got his arm, got his arm hanging out the window so he can feel the wind blow through his fingers as he soars through the air. This section here dedicated to prisoners of war and what a terrifying um just idea that is to be a prisoner of a uh, hostile country yes, and here we have a vietnam war prisoner he's in the bed he's got uh, shackles there on his uh on his leg we've got some like toiletries there some vietnamese toiletries next to the uh, prisoner and you see on the wall of the prison cell there is a set of playing cards apparently this was actually a way to uh, try to help prisoners of war escape because I guess they would uh, they would send in these playing cards innocent looking playing cards but on the backs would actually be a map on how they could escape here we have an Airborne Battlefield Command Center. We just head in to the command center there. Oh yeah. It's pretty crazy. See people pushing all these different buttons. With all the uh, seats in here. have a bathroom in here. It's another training simulator there. This one's called the Gulf Spirit. 
named after uh, this part of the country. And then this massive, massive uh, plain here, right in the middle. This is called Foley's Folly. An ejector seat right there. Wouldn't that be really, really, really scary <laughs> to be flying in a plane high in the air and then just be shot out uh, with the uh, the ejector seat? But actually, looking at this ejector seat, um, this uh, reminds me of uh, Godzilla minus one. Just saw that movie in the ejector seat play. Kind of a really emotional uh, role in the movie. see them here on the Ohio Express loading up uh, loading up the bombs onto the plane there I guess this is like the little uh, bomb cart guys driving you can see here where they actually autograph the bombs before uh, before they are dropped sign their names or maybe even write uh, some cheeky uh, cheeky messages it says a gift that keeps on giving and then that there says mr hussein please accept this free gift so we can go home to our families it says a shake and bake there someone must have been a uh, talladega knights fan but i wonder if these uh people that signed this uh are all disappointed that it uh that it never got uh never got exploded head up the stairs and get a peek at the second floor Yeah, real theme of this uh, museum is just explosions. Lots of bombs, lots of planes that drop bombs, other various things that explode. See all these little bombs or bomblets, if you will. <laughs> I've never heard, never heard the word bomblet, but I guess it's a describe a tiny little mini bomb. See, this bomblet here has its own little tiny parachute. See, this bomb here doesn't just explode, it actually opens up and drops a bunch of little tiny bombs instead. Bum, bum, ba, bum, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bums. Oh, look at this. Looks like an unmanned aircraft here, like a drone, if you will. Can you guys hear that? Can you hear like the really loud boom of aircraft taking off at uh, the uh, at the Air Force Base next door? I do think it's really cool when they draw like the shark mouth onto the uh, onto the craft. I wonder if you counted every single bomb in this museum, how many bombs would there be? This is the Jasmine, and that is actually a missile. Uh, it's almost like half plane, half missile. It's like a missile with wings. And uh, yeah, some of these other here. I thought these were drones at first, but uh, apparently, yeah, they're just missiles with wings. Now we exit through the gift shop. These uh, giant army men are pretty cool. They're $20 a piece. I remember playing with the little tiny ones when I was a kid. Yeah, most of these guys are on the, like are on their walkie talkies. Got a saluting guy there, right there. Yeah, here's the original version of the army men. I remember, uh, remember, oh, this guy right here, the guy that lays down. I remember I always thought he was the most useless because he had the least number of posable options. Yeah, the other ones that you could line up and stand up. But then the one guy laying on his belly, never knew, never knew what to do with him. Yeah, the, uh, 
Air Force plushies there. You would have some of the Blue Angel plushie. When I came inside, originally I asked what was the what was the admission, and the, the gentleman at the desk said, "Do you pay your taxes?" I was like, "Yes." He said, "You've already paid." Of course, outside of the museum, they also have a massive collection of uh, aircraft. And a gentleman in front said that the vast majority of these aircrafts have actually dropped, have actually dropped bombs. This one is called El Lobo 2. You see the uh, drooling, crazed wolf there on the, on the side. I noticed this over here. It says, remove before flight. I wonder what happens if you forget to take those off. I probably, I, yeah, that probably, probably, uh, probably be a big mistake. Out here we have Moab, which is the mother of all bombs. Sadly, this uh, display bursts our bubbles and says that Moab actually stands for Massive Ordnance Air Blast, but acknowledges that it was uh, popularly thought to be, or probably called, the mother, mother of all bombs. I could think of, you know, I could think of a few bombs that maybe, uh, maybe, maybe have a higher level of uh, power than uh, than Moab. Yeah, for some reason, I get a real kick out of the uh, remove before flight side. It's like all these planes have like a pull tab. You have to pull uh, before they'll fly. Oh wow! It's just a. Uh, you guys see that? Oh geez, look at that missile over there. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Oh, this has got a cool, cool sticker on it. Got like a little skeleton dressed up all dapper and a top hat and monocle. Oh, look at up there, they have like a little, little ghost holding a lightning bolt with the word spooky on his chest. Here's a statue dedicated to uh, dogs in the military. It says, uh, to honor and remember all handlers and their family, canine partner, partners for their service and sacrifice. You can see someone even left a little rawhide bone there for the dog. Now I did stop the other night and stock up car kitchen, the old cooler here. I got some, uh, this is like uh, rotisserie chicken that Walmart sells where they kind of like pull it apart. So, uh, you know, it's just a good snack, having some chicken there. You can eat with a, eat with a fork, some hard boiled eggs. Again, a lot of protein, trying to uh, eat low carb. So I ended up buying a lot of, uh, a lot of protein. Got some cheese, some, uh, some sliced chicken there. Really got a lot of chicken. That's uh, fajita chicken. I've not tried that yet. Blueberries are good. Kind of my go-to, uh, uh, like sweeter snack. Get the blueberries. And of course, add a little bit of this to those blueberries. This is a zero sugar ready whip. This has zero carbs. This is a uh, a lifesaver when I'm looking for something uh, something sweet. And of course, got some packets of tuna, some uh, some spam packets. And here's all my bread. All the bread is uh, is keto. Got the keto buns. This is more for like if I stop and get fast food, I can switch the buns out. And then uh, this is for making making sandwiches here. Got my squirty mayonnaise for making sandwiches. So yeah, keeping keeping the car kitchen full, keeping the cooler cold full, kind of you know discourages me from uh, from uh, having to to resort to fast food or. Having to just, you know, sometimes it's just a pain, you know, especially when I'm trying to eat low carb, trying to find something at a restaurant that uh, that meets my needs. So always like having this stocked up so I can always uh, pull over and have a little snack. Just uh, just had some of the hard boiled eggs a second ago. So yeah, gotta keep the car kitchen stocked. And in the colder weather, the ice does last uh, 
way longer. Oh yeah, I wanted to, wanted to try this. This is uh, feta cheese and olive medley salad. I'll try that later. Oop. Oh, there we go. Driving through Fort Walton Beach here, and I noticed this along uh, along the highway. This is the world's oldest Goofy Golf. Of course, Goofy Golf, a chain. There is uh, several locations here in uh, on the uh, Gulf Coast. I know there is uh, one in Pensacola. I didn't get a chance to go over there, and uh, there was there's one in Panama City uh, Beach. Uh, but uh, this one here in Fort Walton is actually the oldest surviving Goofy Golf. I think there's actually a few other Goofy Golfs around uh, the country. There is, I think, one in Knoxville, one in uh, Chattanooga. But this one's been here since 1958. You can see all the amazing sculptures here. It's, uh, you know, things like this really, to me, define what... Uh, what mini golf really is. You know, it is a game of skill and all, but uh, to me, I just love the uh, the crazy figures that you see at uh, the mini golf courses, and this is amazing. Yeah, check out the uh, gorilla there. Although as I'm looking at this gorilla, I notice he's got like these, these empty eye sockets, like you could like put your, Finger. I don't know if I want to put my finger in that hole, but uh, you put your finger in his eye holes. I especially love this uh, this T-Rex here. He has such a unique look. In fact, I don't even know if that is a T-Rex. But uh, yeah, very interesting uh, dino there. Yeah, sadly they're not open today, but I did just want to take a peek here at the course. Look at this, like what even is that right there? That strange, strange head of some sort. Another interesting figure. It's almost like some sort of uh, like tiki headed man. A mural over here with some of the figures from the uh, Goofy Golf. I guess this hole right here you would shoot a golf ball into the mouth of the frog, and then the frog would uh, poop out the golf ball into the hole. A very interesting interpretation of Humpty Dumpty there. Have a uh, squirming octopus there. And then this vicious shark next to the street. Sink the ball in the mouth of this very happy marlin. The sneaky snake over there. And a mean old Florida alligator. It's like the frog, you have to get it into his mouth there. Travels through his body, comes out the tip of his tail, and goes in the hole. But the uh, probably most difficult shot is getting a ball to fly up off this ramp and land in one of the seats of this double-seater outhouse. Drove into Destin, Florida. And I've actually never been here to Destin before. Uh, I know my friend Danny used to vacation here and he told me it was one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. I've heard other people talk about how beautiful the Destin beaches are. So I figured we'd, uh, we'd go take a peek at the beach. It's a little warmer today than it has been on some of our other beach days we've had on this trip. It is indeed a beautiful beach 
out here. And I know when we were in Pensacola, they said they had the whitest beach sand. But uh, looking around here, here on the, the beach here in Destin, I think this may be the, uh, this is probably the whitest sand I've ever seen. Now, a lot of these uh, Gulf Coast beaches are known to be a lot calmer than, uh, than some of the proper Atlantic Ocean beaches. But I uh, got some waves. Some waves out here today. Here outside of McGuire's Irish Pub, we have a double-decker bus here. It says feasting, imbibery, and debauchery. Got a little leprechaun there. You see the bus is full of mannequins. Let's get a peek here. Oh, it looks like they're dressed up for St. Patrick's Day. Maybe they uh, celebrate St. Patrick's Day all uh, all year long. I'm fascinated by these creepy, uh, creepy mannequins. You can see the bus driver here. And uh, you can see he has no arms and no legs. I guess they're all just uh, headed torsos. Oh, yeah. And I'm looking at these. You see the way their eyes are. I wonder if these were animatronic at one point. But they don't seem to be currently functioning animatronics, but I wonder if at one point they moved. Actually, if you look at the into the back of the bus here, you can see they've got their seasonal outfits. They've got a box of Santa Claus hats there, I guess to switch out in Christmas. And it looks like there might be some Mardi Gras gear in that box, although uh, Mardi Gras is coming up close and uh, they forgot to change into their Mardi Gras gear. Oh dear. Now my, uh, my friend Danny, who uh, used to vacation here, he uh, told me his favorite place to eat was this, Fud Puckers. Not to be confused with Fud Ruckers, I guess. So I figured I'd uh, check it out. Looks like my kind of place. You can see the uh, massive alligator here on the sign inviting you in. It says, eat more Fud. Is that, does he mean does he mean food? As we approach, you can see a, uh, a crawfish speeding along in a speedboat. Over here above the entrance, there's this massive alligator. So this is a 19 foot long alligator. It says, found by Father Fudd at Fudd Pucker. So this alligator actually found here a 19 foot alligator. That is huge. Here is Big Jake, another alligator here at uh, at Fud Puckers. Says he was 15 feet long and weighed over a thousand pounds. So yeah, look at that. Oh, that was. I think that is yeah. That is a crocodile. There, here uh, 
taxidermied and placed in this cage. Now you can see out in front of the restaurant is a alligator pit. You see the neon gator there. And uh, maybe so we can head in through this door here. Danger, live alligators. And the sign there says, world's greatest alligator park. It says there's actually gonna be an alligator show here in a few minutes. So I don't know if someone's gonna be coming out. Let's see if we can, oh, I don't see any alligators. <laughs> I guess maybe they're under the water because it's a little, a little colder today. See another <laughs> alligator there. Look at this one standing straight up. If you ever see an alligator standing straight up like that, uh, you best run away. I mean, run away from any alligator this size. But if they, they're standing up on their hind legs, something horribly supernatural is happening. Oh, down here. Down here we got some uh, some gators. Oh, we got some little little baby little baby gators there. Oh, look at them hanging out in the water. Oh, so many little tiny baby gators. Little gator museum back here. Here's a prehistoric crocodile skull. Oh, and even some more, even more baby gators. Look how many. How many little guys? Oh, sorry, didn't mean to scare you guys. Swimming away there. There's a preserved American crocodile, of course. The best way to tell the difference between a crocodile alligator. The uh, crocodile has the V-shaped nose, and the American alligator has the U-shaped nose some invasive snakes to Florida. Yeah, look how big that snake is. I know there's actually been cases of these uh, these uh, released boa constrictors that actually eat alligators. It's actually kind of a nuisance in the, in the Everglades area. It's an albino alligator display. It's really cool showing how they uh, dive underwater there. Let's see the alligator nest here. Mother gator with the little babies in her mouth. And some sort of uh, jungle cat up there. It's the alligator underwater habitat here. You can see the alligator up there and his cousins, the alligator snapping turtle, and the alligator gar. Technically not related to either, either one, but uh, they all have alligator in their name. Here we have the mystical gators. This is salty pepper and little sugar. Oh yeah, very beautiful gators there. The half white, half green gators. Wonder which one is salty, which one's pepper, and which one's little sugar. a hippopotamus bursting out of the wall and you wonder why there's a hippopotamus and an alligator uh, attraction but apparently it's because alligators kill more humans than uh, alligators and crocodiles combined so here we have the true killer so basically what we do here guys for the first timers we uh, buy these guys from farmers so instead of ending up as like purses boots belts stuff like that uh, we get them instead, and uh, once we get them, being an alligator park, they're educational only once we have them. Not to worry, he has been born and raised around people, and it's a very chilly day out, so uh, he's not going to be too rambunctious. They never ever stop growing. Same as Pee Wee. Uh, so as little as Pee Wee is right now, eventually he'll be a full 12 foot size alligator weighing about 800 to a... It's a very fun little alligator park down there, but I think now we're going to go uh, grab some uh, scraps of the deed. Now they said the uh, main level is currently under renovations, so we're gonna eat here at the uh, lower level. The menu here is a newspaper called the Fud Pucker. I guess this is Fud here. He is the uh, the namesake of the restaurant. Here are the oral delights. 
some of the different uh, dishes. Looks like a lot of good stuff here. Can't quite decide exactly what I want at this point. Started off with a bowl of seafood and alligator gumbo. Definitely a big fan of gumbo there. Mmm, so tasty. A little chunk of shrimp and gator in there. Oh. All right, and my entree has arrived. We got the stuffed mahi-mahi. I think it's like stuffed with crab. Looks very good. And then for my side, I got this uh, big pile of vegetables. Let's try some of this stuffed mahi there. It's got like Parmesan cheese on it. It's in like a lot of butter. Mmm. That is super good. Yeah, it's got the crab meat in there. That fish. Mm. That is spectacular. Try some of the veggies. Mm. All this is very, very good. And it said that the coleslaw had pineapple in it. Which I find that very unusual. So let me see. Okay. Tastes like normal coleslaw. A little bit of an aftertaste of uh, of pineapple, but still pretty good. And here in uh, the gift shop, I have several shirts that uh, allude uh, allude to swears. <laughs> see, yeah, yeah, right there. They're implying implying swear words. And fun was had by all. And now it is time to get back on that long, lonesome road. Now the room is fairly decent, although I noticed there's like this mysterious unwrapped cup sitting upright on the sink. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna trust that cup. Am I supposed to, am I supposed to be drinking out of this? And there's these cups that are upside down and wrapped. So I, 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 we're gonna, we're gonna dispose of this this mysterious cup. Actually, looks like the room is maybe only half cleaned. There is uh, there this bed is is made, but there's there's no comforter on this bed, and also uh, there's some keys left in the room that are not the ones that I was given. So uh, uh, the room look, looks looks pretty clean. Besides that, though, oh well, who cares? And we have landed in Orlando, Florida. I decided to, to just kind of drive through the evening. Ended up kind of getting in late. It's about, uh, got in about midnight tonight. But um, I figured, you know, we've been heading south, trying to get away from the cold weather. I figured come down here to Orlando for a few days. Uh, some, some always, always some fun things to do here and uh, a few, events that I wanted to uh, partake in and be occurring within the next couple days. So I think, think we'll be we'll be setting up camp here for just a little bit and then uh, we will be moving on uh, from there. But uh, thank you guys for, for sticking with me on this journey that uh, that took us here. Um, been uh, traveling non-stop for what is it? We left the 8th, it's the 22nd doing math on flight. It's about two weeks, two weeks since I left home. We're still still on the road here, so I figured we'd finally get out of the cold, and I'll tell you what, I we finally made it as I was getting out of the car, coming up here to the hotel room. It is finally 
warm. Finally, some decent cool. Not overly warm. It's actually delightful here in in Orlando. So I'm uh, looking forward to tomorrow to enjoying some nice weather for the first time in a, in a couple weeks. But uh, thank you guys for coming with me. It means the world to me. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, other fun, random stuff. If uh, you'd like to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. Also doing personalized messages on Cameo. I've actually got a few Cameos. I've got to go get done uh, after, uh, after I'm done filming here. And of course, all those things, I'll keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one is in the bag.